This is the urinary system model. You might easily be able to identify the kidneys. This is the abdominal aorta. This is the inferior vena cava. The renal arteries are the red blood vessels leading towards the kidneys. The renal veins are the blood vessels leading from the kidneys. The ureters take the urine down to the bladder, so you have two ureters. This is the urinary bladder here. This is the urethra, so that the fluid would be able to exit. You have two sphincters in the urethra. You have an internal sphincter, which would be located just very at the very bottom portion here of the bladder. It would be made up of smooth muscle. And then you would have an external sphincter would be located right here at the very bottom, um, which would be made out of skeletal muscle. You can come back up here to this kidney, and there are several structures we want to identify in it. The first one is the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis is the structure that's located here, just right where the, ure where the ureters are going to exit the kidney. So it'd be just right underneath these blood vessels here, the renal pelvis. The calyces, you can see that they lead here to all of these triangular structures that are called pyramids. Each pyramid is located here. The tissue in between the pyramids are renal columns renal columns. So you have the pyramids and the columns in between the pyramids. The cortex and the medulla have to do with the different regions that are of the kidney. The cortex is this outer portion here and the medulla is the inner portion that would include the pyramids themselves. So you can see that the cortex is about the outer centimeter and the medulla would be the inner couple of centimeters here. This is another model of the kidney. For clarification, we want to look at the cortex and the medulla, which is that inner layer. The medulla is going to have several structures in it. You have several triangular red structures, each called pyramids, and the material or structures in between the pyramids are called columns, <laughs> the renal columns. Okay, this is um, a portion of the kidney. This is the cortex, this is the medulla, so this is enlarged, but you have several nephrons here. You have somewhere around a million nephrons in each kidney, so you, we want to look at the structure of a nephron. The beginning structure of the nephron is the renal corpuscle. The renal corpuscle, you have several of these white dots here. Those are all the renal corpuscle. There are two parts of the renal corpuscle though. You have the glomerulus, which is the blood vessel inside of the corpuscle, and Bowman's capsule, which is actually the white portion that surrounds the, the glomerulus. Okay. If you look here, there's this, a, this is a red blood vessel, so it's bringing oxygenated blood in. This is an afferent arterial taking blood in towards the glomerulus. And this small red blood vessel here is an efferent arterial taking blood away from the glomerulus. Okay. Whenever fluid leaves the glomerulus, it enters Bowman's capsule, and then it enters this proximal convoluted tubule, which is all a squiggly line here. It goes down the loop of Henle, that's the descending limb. It goes up the loop of Henle, which is the ascending limb. Then the fluid is going to enter the distal convoluted tubule. That's the last part of the nephron but the collecting duct is going to collect the urine from all of the nephrons. So let's look at a model that has a larger nephron on it. Okay. Here you have the glomerulus. Okay. You have an afferent arterial bringing blood in towards the glomerulus. You have the efferent arterial exiting the glomerulus and it actually makes up this blood vessel that is going to either absorb or secrete um, products um, and that's called the paratubular capillaries. Okay. Fluid leaves the glomerulus and it goes into Bowman's capsule to the afferent arterial. You need to follow your little curvy lines through here. You have your descending limb of the loop of Henle. You have your ascending limb of the loop of Henle. And then it's going to curl around some more to make your distal convoluted tubule. And then it all empties into the collecting duct. That's the nephron.